In the Coco main event of the evening in the lightweight division, a highly anticipated fight between Dustin the Diamond Poirier and Iron Michael Chandler. And Poirier got it done over Chandler in the third round and finished Chandler by a rear naked choke. The official time coming in two minutes of round number three. Uh, Mark, let me throw it back over to you first. Give us your thoughts on the Diamond notching another win on his record. Uh, he mentioned on some interview that he, uh, what do you call it, the violence triangle or trifecta? It. Mm -hmm. It's so accurate. Because all, like, all the guys who were like, I'm the most violent, exciting one in the UFC, yep. he has finished all of them. Gaethje, yep. Chandler, and uh, who else? Eddie Alvarez. And Eddie, yes. Yes. Yeah, I love it. It's a, it's a great comment by him. Um, and throw Connor in that mix, too, if you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, what a freaking fight. No one is surprised that it was a great fight. Um, this is another one that, uh, that I think we kind of nailed to a T. I, I want to say we all took Dustin. I can't remember hundred yeah, percent. Um, I think so. but yeah, I said Dustin may be in danger early in that, early in that fight while he tried to get a read on Chandler's explosion and movement. And he was, he got hurt early, got clipped, had to kind of push through that. I said all in all, I thought Dustin's boxing technique was going to be too good and that he would just have an advantage there that would start to play out and that when he could back Chandler up against the cage, that that's where he'd hurt him just because Chandler's not as good when he's not out in open space. That happened in the round one. He almost got him out of there potentially if he had a little more time. I said if Chandler would ever wrestle, it would change the whole fight, and boy, did it ever. He took a dominant round two after Dustin nearly finished him. You know, At the end of round one, he came out and bounced back beautifully by remembering he has that wrestling in his pocket that he that he should use. Um, so all that kind of saw. What I did not see is that this thing was going to end by submission. I did not see that one coming. I, if you told me somebody yeah. was going to win that fight by submission, not like they're not capable. They both have submissions on their resumes. You know, they're both skilled down there. But you, if you told me that fight was ending by submission, I would have said no fucking way. So that was impressive. What a damn job by, by Dustin to pull off getting to the point where he got that submission from the way yeah. he shifted his weight on the takedown to kind of just float, end up on top to the way he took the back to the way he finished just a massive, massive moment and W for Dustin Poirier. And we already know this, but what a friggin' dog that man is. I mean, like he might be the poster child for like that fighter is a dog. Like he just is that guy. You cannot, out scrap Dustin Poirier. I really, I don't think it's possible. Like, if you can't tap him, you can't win. It almost feels like that's the point that we've reached with him. He's he is that good in in a firefight. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't finish him, if you can't catch him, if it ends up being a slugfest like, that that goes out of the first round, then yeah. he really has a great chance. And also, he, yeah, to your point, he really showed off uh, his jujitsu, which is very good. Uh, yeah. Not only getting the sub over Michael Chandler, but all of round two defending the submissions. And Chandler had his arms wrapped around his neck, of, you know, hunting for that neck a few times. Yep. And unless it unless it's against a super world class guy, super high level guy like an Oliveira or like a Khabib, to be honest, it yep. also goes to show you just how high level those two guys are. That once Khabib got Dustin's back, he found a choke right away. And uh, so, yeah, Omar, let's bring you in here talking about Poirier's finish over Michael Chandler. What were your thoughts of the fights overall, of the fight overall, and of the finish in the third round? Fight was great. Um, I love watching Dustin Poirier strike. I think his boxing is top tier. Um, his management of distance when people are against a cage, I think, is some of the best in the UFC. It doesn't matter what weight class it's in. Um, not a lot of guys are able to keep a guy stuck on the fence, continue to strike, and also still move out of the way of, of getting hit with big bombs. You know, those, those Hail Mary haymakers that a lot of guys throw up against Cage. Um, I also did not see a sub coming. Um, I thought the scrambles were very, very interesting because it, it, it kind of went to show that Justin Poirier, even though as, as good as a wrestler as Michael Chandler is, Poirier is no stranger to, to wrestling and to grappling. I think a lot of people forget about that because of how often he stands because of the whole Khabib thing and the Charles Oliveira thing. Um, but 
it was good to see Justin Poirier kind of give a, a, a y'all must have forgot performance when it came to that stuff because yep. it, he, I, I feel like with all the wins that that man has, people still weren't giving him the credit that he deserves for what he's done in that in that division. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about where these guys go from here. Uh, let's start with the winner, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Uh, Mark, we will find out where – he is now ranked in your rankings, I'm sure. Or, may, or maybe he won't be a huge riser or faller because he's still at the upper echelon of lightweight. Yeah, he's got nowhere to move. He's uh, yeah. Islam's the champ. Charles is one. Dustin was two. And he stays at two. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I, one of Dustin Poirier or Charles Oliveira needs to fight Benil Dariush. I, I think that absolutely needs to happen. Um, if Dariush is not fighting one of those two men, I think it's a travesty. I really don't know who I'd rather. They're both so fun in, in different ways, those, those two matchups for Dariush. And then out of Poirier and Oliveira, whoever doesn't get Dariush, I really don't know who they would fight at, at this point. They've already both beaten Gaethje. They've both beaten Chandler. Obviously, Poirier just did. So I don't know. Like, maybe Rafael Fazeev? I'm not. There seems to be there? not, like, a perfect answer. There and I've even heard rumors of Gaethje and Fazeev. So if that happens, then even more so. It's like, well, who the hell does Poirier or Oliveira fight? So I don't know. It's a little. I'm curious to see how how that plays out. But one of them's got to fight Benil Dariush for sure. Omar, any thoughts on Poirier's next opponent or who it could be? Poirier for Poirier would have to be Dariush or or Oliveira at this point. Um, I would prefer Dariush just because I don't think we've seen that one yet. Um, and I think the stand-up that Dustin presents and the ground game that Benil presents is very different from Oliveira, but almost just as dangerous in its own right. So um, I think that'd be fun. I'm not against a, a rematch with Charles Oliveira at this point. Um, I just I don't know if it's still too soon or not. Yeah, it feels so soon to me. I don't know that yeah. I'd go that route already. Uh, I will say really quick, uh, I saw a, a call-out from Mateus Gamrot for Michael Chandler. And I got to say, I don't hate that. Not even a little bit. That is a fight that Michael Chandler, yeah. I would be picking pretty confidently. And hopefully he can get that done. But I think that fight was is guaranteed firework from beginning to end. Yeah, because Gamrot, you know, he's had been flying up the rankings until he ran into the most amazing Benil Darius that we've ever seen. Facts. And, uh... And so coming off of a loss, that would kind of make sense. I, I think if they wanted Chandler to to kind of stay in a bit of a more high-profile fight, maybe they would give Chandler to Fazeev. Uh, even though Fazeev is like winning and winning and winning, like Michael Chandler is still super high-profile, which would be huge for Fazeev uh, and would still be big for Chandler. If he got a win over Fazeev, it would get him right back like into you know, the, the conversation of, of the top of lightweight. Mark, your thoughts? I, I kind of think Chandler might end up being the Conor McGregor guy at mm. at, oh. at 170. Yeah, he's been calling for that. He's been calling for I'm it for a while. My, my one hang-up is that, and I've always said this, that I don't know if I can envision Conor accepting a fight with someone coming off a loss right? just because of his ego, but he knows how exciting Chandler is. He knows how much that would sell how much they could talk. I could see him accepting it, and I could see the UFC pushing for it too because they love Chandler. They know that he's always good for a show. They know that he is a a star, if not greater star potential type guy. So if they did match him with Connor and he loses, all right, boom, we got Connor back. But if he beats Connor, it's like, boom, Michael Chandler, mega star. You know what I mean? So I, I could see the UFC pushing for that. Um I think I'm kind of down to Chandler or Jorge as my guesses for who Connor fights. But uh, <clears throat> if Chandler's not going to be fighting Connor, then I agree. I think he may have to look a little bit down the line and, and turn back one of these young guys, and Gamrot certainly fits that bill. I, either that or this rumor, and we've mentioned it on here before, of the potential of the UFC signing Eddie Alvarez and, and giving us a trilogy fight between That's him and Chandler, cool. which would be fucking awesome as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, give me the, give me all the popcorn for that fight. Hell yeah. uh, Donald Cerrone, just for reference, uh, he was coming off back to back losses going into his fight with Connor. Huh? 
All right, fair, fair, fair. He fair. lost to uh, he lost to Tony. Well, that was not really a, a terrible loss. It was when he like blew his nose and like his eye filled oh, with blood. I remember that. Right, right. And then his next fight, he got TKO'd by Gaethje. All right, that that's a good bad. point. So maybe Connor would take it. Maybe he would. That'd be great. It'd be great to get Connor back, right? Chandler Connor feels the most like the fight where, like, when I envision it, I'm like, yeah, that's the one that's going to happen. I, I don't know why. I just I can see that one at 170. Like Dude, getting them... Connor back though at this point is just it's never going to be the Connor that like I fell in love with. You know what no, I mean? He's a different guy. He's a different person. It's, he's it's a different a, fighter. Of course not. Yeah. I'm just never going to be that excited. I think anymore for it. I'm going to watch it. It'll be fun. <laughs> But it's not the same, bro. Yeah, the, same. the aura has left a, a little bit. The magic. He's just become such a monstrous dick face that I just, <laughs> I, I just, it's so hard to be that kind of fan anymore to him. You know, you just, you just don't like that he shaved his beard, bro. Bro, he needs to get that beard back. Like, <laughs> the sad thing is, is it's a really good costume. I totally knew where that was from as soon as I saw it too. What are you it's talking a really about? good costume, but yeah, he looks... It, what what costume? He shaved his beard for Catch Me If You Can. He was Leonardo DiCaprio in Catch Me If You Can. What? Oh, I, didn't, I didn't even see that. That was what, the, that was what it was for. Uh, it was for Halloween. Oh. oh, he still has no beard now. It's been a minute Correct. since Halloween. Oh, well, it's, it's struggling to grow back, but it's there. It's there. <laughs> it's working. You guys know the struggle. That shit's going to be like a year before we see that beard back. <laughs> Maybe he likes it. Maybe he's like, oh, this is actually nice not having a beard. I don't think he likes it at all. <laughs> I think I think that man, that might have been one of the first times we've seen Conor McGregor insecure in the last, like, six <laughs> years. People shit all over him left and right. It was crazy. That's fine. <laughs> uh, there'd be a great fight, man. Him against Chandler. It would be a yeah. huge fight. It would be a great fight. It would be must-see. Let it, like, headline a pay-per-view. Find another, like, non-title fight to go into the totally. main. It easily could, yeah. That'd be awesome. All right, let's keep uh, plowing on. Yeah, do that and put, like, Gaethje and Fazeev as a co-main or some shit. That'd be dope. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 